Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing uh, caviole and NOS free. Okay, so I've described for you what a lipid raft is now, and I've told you that it's uh, a portion of the cell membrane where we have a very high density of these other components of the cell membrane. What I now need to tell you is what uh, those other components of the cell membrane are. Okay, so one of the major components of lipid rafts are molecules that are collectively known as glycosphingolipids. So I want to explain to you what a glycosphingolipid is. And there's a specific type of glycosphingolipid that is very common uh, within uh, lipid rafts, which is known as a gangliocide, but we'll discuss that later on. So gangliosides. Okay, so let's start with what is a glycosphingolipid. So glycosphingolipids are based on a molecule known as sphingosine. Okay, so sphingosine. Right, and uh, sphingosine has a quite interesting structure basically. Its full name is 2-amino 4-octadecene 1 free diol. So the proper name for this compound is 2 amino, 2 amino, 4 octadecene, octadecene, decene, uh, 1 free diol. Okay, so that's the proper chemist's name for sphingosine. Sphingosine, sphingosine is the biochemist's name. So from this name, we can now, well, the chemist's name is better, of course, um, and because we can actually work out what this molecule is from this, uh, because this is effectively a description of how to draw it out. Okay, so it's a 18 carbon molecule, and don't worry, we're not going to quite draw out all 18 of the carbons, because we only need to look at these extra groups that are stuck on, these specialised bits. So let's draw out a few of the carbons. One two, three, four, and I think we're only going to need up to five carbons. So, let's start adding bits on. So we know that it has an amino group of this second carbon. So we'll draw that amino group of the second carbon. We also know there are hydroxyl groups, to alcohol groups, of the first and the third carbon. So let's put those on. So here's a hydroxyl group of our first carbon. Here's a hydroxyl group of our third carbon. We also know that it has this double bond, so let me just highlight certain bits. The amino group we've stuck on now, that's this bit here, okay? Uh, we've dealt with this one free diol here. Here are those two hydroxyl groups. Now what we need to deal with is, is this four, oh sorry, I should be doing this in a different colour. We need to deal with this four in pink, and then this decene. That means it has a double bond at some point. And that double bond is off the fourth carbon. So it's the fourth to the fifth carbon there. Okay, so that I claim is all the fancy structures. Now everything else is just very, very simple. So firstly we need to add on the extra carbons because we need 18 carbons, octadec. We've drawn five, so there are 13 still to go. But we don't need to draw them all because most of them are just going to be in methylene groups. So you're going to have methylene group after methylene group after methylene group after methylene group. Now the whole molecule needs to be 18 carbons long. We've done 5 already, so we've got 13 left. The final one that's on the end is going to be a methyl group. So that means that 12 of these are going to be in the middle, and they're all going to be methylene groups. So we have 12 methylene groups, and then the final one on the end is not a methylene group, it's a methyl group. So that has now added all the carbons on. Let's just check. 1, then we've got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We've got all 18 carbons now. Okay, and now we just finish everything off by adding hydrogens on. So we need a hydrogen off here, a hydrogen off here, a hydrogen off here, okay, um, oh, a hydrogen off this third, car uh, second carbon, sorry, and a hydrogen off this first carbon, two hydrogens off this first carbon. And that finishes everything off, basically. So, this is the structure of sphingosine, 
okay? Or two amino, four octadecene, one free dial. Okay, slingosine. Right, so now what we want to see is how do you get a ganglioside from this? And in order to understand how you get a ganglioside from this, we need to firstly go through another type of molecule. We need to firstly discuss what a ceramide is. Because a ceramide, oh, sorry, a glycosphingolipid is basically um, a modified um, ceramide. Okay, so let's talk about what a ceramide is first. Okay, so ceramides are based on the sphingosine structure. So what you do is you add a carboxylic acid group. So you bring in, let's say, some carboxylic acid here. So let's have some carboxylic acid here. And what you're going to do, and it will have some arbitrary R group here. We don't know, neither do we care, what the R group here is. It can be whatever you like, as far as we're concerned. To become a ceramide, what you need to do is you need to form an amide link with this nitrogen. So let's draw it out again. It doesn't hurt to revise. So here is the structure of sphingosine. So here's this double bond. Then we've got this methylene group 12 times here. Okay, so methylene 12 times, and then the methyl group on the end here. Okay, we've got these two hydrogens coming off this these carbons. Then we've got this third, um, we've got a hydroxyl group coming off this third carbon, along with a hydrogen. And then we've got this amino group here, which is going to become important. So we're not going to draw all the hydrogens off yet, because we're going to form an amide bond with that. So we'll talk about that in a moment. And we've still got this hydroxyl group over here with a high, two hydrogens here. Okay, so we're going to bring in this carboxylic acid group and we're going to form an amide link with this nitrogen. So in an amide link, what you do is you take off this hydroxyl group from the carboxylic acid, you take off one of the hydrogens, and then you bind the carbon to the nitrogen instead. Okay, so that gives you this amide link, as it's called. So this here is the amide link between uh, the sphingosine molecule and the carboxylic acid that we brought in. So this whole structure now is a ceramide molecule. And again, a ceramide is not just one molecule. It has this R group here, so it can be what that R group can be whatever you like. So ceramides are a huge, great family of molecules that are all based on this structure, basically. Okay, so another step before we get to glycosphingolipids. We're going to talk about sphingolipids before we talk about glycosphingolipids. Okay, so sphingolipids. What is a sphingolipid? Well, a sphingolipid is a modified ceramide. A sphingolipid basically is a structure where you add something on to this hydroxyl group. So you take a ceramide and you add on something onto this hydroxyl group. Now, uh, let me just draw that out again, just because it doesn't hurt to revise things. So here is our new group that we've added on to this hydroxyl group here, off the first carbon of our ceramide here. Okay, then off our second carbon we have this nitrogen, which we know is involved in this amide link with our carboxylic acid here, which has some arbitrary R group there. Okay, there's a hydrogen off here. Then this third carbon, we have a hydroxyl group coming down here, a hydrogen. Fourth carbon, we have this double bond, two hydrogens there. And then we have the methylene group, like so, 12 times. Okay. And then the methyl group right on the end of the sphingolipid. Okay, so that's the structure of uh, a sphingolipid. Now, what's a glycosphingolipid? And don't worry, I won't draw another, more, another picture out for this. Glycosphingolipid. A glycosphingolipid means that this R group that you've put in here is a sugar structure, okay? Now, gangliosides are a subset of glycosphingolipids. And gangliosides have a very are, again, a specific sort of a glycosphingolipid. So they have a specific R group in this position, basically. A specific type of R, well, R prime, I've called it, because the R group was off this carboxylic acid. They have a specific R prime group here, okay? Uh, it, they are a glycosphingolipid, so it's still a sugar, but they have, a, they have some sort of 
specific structure of there. Now, these these molecules, as you can see, they have this very long uh, hydrophobic tail here, which will interact very nicely with uh, the hydrophobic core of a uh, phospholipid bilayer. So these can be inserted into the phospholipid bilayer, and you have a very high density of glycosphingolipids, in particular ganglionized glycosphingolipids in uh, lipid rafts. In particular, one of the ganglionides that you see a lot is GM1 ganglioside. So GM1 ganglioside is very much so present in lipid rafts. It has a high presence. Okay? And it is the one, it is significant because it is the one which is targeted by cholera toxin. Cholera toxin binds to it in order to gain access to the cell. Okay, so there's a fun fact about GM1 ganglioside. So it's something you'll hear about in pathology. Right, okay, so um, th that's one of the components of um, lipid rafts. You have lots of these glycosphingolipids, and in particular ganglioides, and in particular the GM1 ganglioides. You have lots of these sort of molecules instead of the normal boring phospholipid. And now there's another two members of lipid rafts that are, uh, that are, not, that are present in very high densities. And those are sterols now. So they are cholesterol and ergosterol. So I'll start off with cholesterol, which it's fair to say is more famous than ergosterol. Cholesterol, um, yeah, well, you know, it might as well have its own column in the Daily Mirror. It's a very, very famous molecule. People have heard of cholesterol. Now, um, you know, there's bad cholesterol and good cholesterol all the time in the news. It's an essential part of the cell membrane, so it's a very, very important molecule. Um, we're going to, it's, and it's present in lipid rafts, so we're going to look at its structure, um, and that's pretty much all we're going to say about it in this video. We're not going to talk uh, in detail about its uh, homeostasis. Okay, uh, so cholesterol then. Let's have a look at the structure of cholesterol. So cholesterol is based on the structure of a sterol, uh, and its name specifically means, um, sterol means that it's based on a sterol, uh, well, a sterol structure, and coli means bile, basically, so it's the sterol found in bile, uh, bile, rather. Um, okay, so that's where its name comes from, and sterol, basically, is a specific chemical structure, uh, which is similar to steroid. So, in fact, maybe we should discuss this. So, let's discuss what a steroid is, firstly, and then we'll discuss what a sterol is, and then we'll discuss what cholesterol is. So, a steroid, a steroid, rather, is a chemical definition. It's not a biological definition. Uh, most people would guess that it's something that's biologically active because they've heard of steroids. They've heard of anabolic steroids, generally. Um, and they've heard of steroids turning people into... Uh, uh, that people take when they're undergoing gender transformations. Okay? Uh, but steroids are a chemical structure. It was defined in chemistry, not biology. So steroids have this rather fantastic structure. They, I'm going to draw it skeletally rather than uh, molecularly because it's uh, a lot easier on the eye if you see it skeletally rather than molecularly. So they have four rings, four, three of which are six-membered rings. So here are two of them. The third one comes off up here, okay? And then the fifth one comes off up here, like so. So those are uh, the five, sorry, the four, the four rings of steroids. So one, two, three, four. Okay, now this is the uh, skeletal formula, which means that at every corner you have a carbon, and wherever there are missing bonds, so for instance at this corner we've only got two bonds with other carbons, uh, that means that you're implicitly supposed to assume that the other two bonds are just hydrogens coming off the carbon. So you will notice that this steroid structure literally just consists of carbons and hydrogens. There is nothing else to it. So it's a very, very simple structure. Okay, so sterols are slightly more interesting. They have uh, they have an oxygen in them. They have an alcohol group, which is why they're called ols, sterols. Steroid structure with an alcohol group on, basically, is what it means. So sterol, you just copy out this exact same picture, 
and then you, I need to tell you where to stick this hydroxyl group because that's the only new bit of information. Okay, so we copy out the picture for steroids, this four-ringed structure. Okay, and here's this um, fifth. Uh, sorry, this fourth ring, which is a five-membered carbon ring. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and then you have a hydroxyl group down here. Okay, so that makes it a sterol. So sterols are chemically defined. They have this uh, multiple rings, uh, ring structure, and uh, they have a hydroxyl group off this first ring in this particular position. Okay, right, so uh, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.